Please welcome to the stage the founder and CEO of Be The Change, Inc., and a Service Nation convener, Alan Casey. Wow, I made the mistake of not seeing that video before right now. Um, I feel like he's with us. Um, and it's great to be with all of you here. Uh, you know, whenever we have a gathering like this of people, leaders in the service movement, it's, it's like a family reunion. And that's what Senator Kennedy was all about, was family. His family, the family of our country, the family of the world. And it's like a family reunion because we share values. And we try to put those values into practice the way he did every single day. Uh, Melody, thank you for your beautiful words. And thank you for your leadership. And we're so blessed to have the leadership of President Obama and our extraordinary First Lady, who began their presidency on Martin Luther King Day by calling the whole country to service and have been leading on this so powerfully. Uh, it's just a blessing for all of us. And it's wonderful to be here with all of you. I, I'm here to speak on behalf of Service Nation and Voices for National Service and America Forward to share a few thoughts about our beloved champion, Ted Kennedy, and to introduce his extraordinary wife, Vicki Kennedy, who's with us. I love Ted Kennedy. It was one of the greatest blessings of my life to work with him, to learn from him, to be inspired by him every single day. Michael Brown and I, who I started City Year with, were so blessed because we started City Year in Boston and our senior senator took an interest in what we were doing from day one, before we'd done anything. He reached out to us, said, you're behind, you're for service, I'm with you. He held hearings and featured City Year. And then we were so honored, and, and Stephanie talked about it in the video, I'll never forget it. When he agreed to be our first graduation speaker, this was in June of 1990, we only had 50 young people, we were barely known. And it was an unbelievably hot day. He came to our city or headquarters, which was a donated old abandoned warehouse with no air conditioning. 650 people showed up, 50 young people graduating because Senator Kennedy was going to be the graduation speaker. And I will never forget that day. As Stephanie said, he picked up on the energy in the room. He joined the Corps doing calisthenics, chain breakers. That's the city or trademark. He went up to the podium. He looked down at his prepared speech, and he realized, I don't need a prepared speech for this. This is public service. This is my life. And I'll for never forget what he said. He spoke right to the core members. He said, you know, it's always been young people that have led the change in this country, and his voice started to grow. It was young people who answered my brother President Kennedy's call to ask not and signed up in droves to join the Peace Corps, an idea that nobody thought could work. It was young people who joined the Freedom Rides and did the marches and the sit-ins to demand that we have civil rights in this country. It was young people who walked the snowy streets of New Hampshire to end a war. It was young people who were in the forefront of the women's movement and the environmental movement. It's always been young people who've led the change in our country. And he looked right at the core members and he said, and now it is you, young people like you serving in city air and those like you all across this country who are picking up that standard and saying we're ready to serve. And I pledge to you, I'm going to go back to Washington and I'm going to get legislation passed, the National and Community Service Trust Act that he worked on with President Bush 41 to make it possible for not just 50 city year people, but tens of thousands of people all over this country to regain that spirit of service. We all felt like we were participating in a little bit of history. We had no idea that not only would he get back and work with Greg Petersmeyer, who's here, and President Bush, and get that law passed, and Shirley Sagawa, who helped to craft it, and get it passed, but he would commit to this, as Melody said. He made that promise. It was a 20-year promise. He kept at it. He got that first bill done, establishing points of light, establishing the Commission on National Service, and then he wrote the law to create President Clinton's AmeriCorps program, and then when AmeriCorps was under attack, he led the fight to save it, and then the crowning achievement, working closely with his good friend across the aisle, Senator Hatch, the law we celebrate today, which is so rightly named, and that was a beautiful moment 
when Senator Hatch said, I want to name this. They would worked on it together. It was the Kennedy-Hatch bill. If you talk to Kennedy, it was the Hatch-Kennedy bill if you talk to Hatch. But he got up and said, I want to name this the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act. And even, and it was an un unbelievable, overwhelming bipartisan vote, 79 votes in the United States Senate just a year ago. And even the people who voted against it stood up and applauded. I was watching it on C-SPAN. He stuck with it. And you know, and his dedication, we saw that. The week before the Service Nation Summit, we almost didn't have a bill. Senator Kennedy's staff was negotiating hard with Senator Hatch's staff, and they were in an impasse. And they were doing it in a bipartisan way. And even while Senator Kennedy was battling cancer, he heard about this impasse, he picked up the phone, he called his good friend Orrin Hatch, and he said, let's get this done. And we were freaking out. We had this whole summit. We have both nominees coming. We, we're not going to have a bill. Senator Kennedy, as Melody spoke about, stepped in and made sure we got a bill, literally days before. And when Senator Hatch agreed to come to the summit, I pulled him aside and I said, we're so glad you're here. What happened? How did you guys get this done? And he said to me, you know, Alan, Teddy and I are like brothers. And like brothers, we sometimes fight. But we love each other. And when Teddy called me and he gave me his word, that was good enough for me. He gave me his word, and that was good enough for me. Think about that. Across the aisle. And that's why we have this anniversary celebration today. We need to recapture that spirit of bipartisanship. We need to recapture that willingness to compromise and work together across the aisle. And that's what Senator Kennedy's life was all about. Yes, standing firm on principle, but willing to reach out and embrace the other side's ideas and get them to embrace his so powerfully. And you know, while we celebrate today, and we should celebrate, because it's an extraordinary achievement, the Kennedy Serve America Act, the greatest and most creative expansion of national service and social innovation and community solutions and entrepreneurship that we've seen since the Great Depression. We can't rest on our laurels. You know, as Harris Wofford, a wonderful leader in this movement and a mentor of mine, often reminds me, when Franklin Roosevelt took over the White House during the Great Depression, the greatest economic crisis we had until today, he called for the Civilian Conservation Corps, and in six months, they had 250,000 people in the woods, serving, learning, contributing, back at work. Well, the Kennedy Serve America Act calls for 250,000 people, and I think we need to push, and it's supposed to happen over the next seven years. But we're in a big crisis right now, so we need to say, yes, thank you. But we need to let the Congress know and the administration know we're ready to serve, and we should accelerate this law. We should take advantage of you know, last year, 250,000 people applied to AmeriCorps online. The year before, it was only 93,000. So the demand is there. The desire to serve is there. So we need to push that. We need to let Congress know we're ready to serve and say, let's put these extraordinary people to work, making a difference in our communities. I know if Senator Kennedy were here, he'd be leading that charge. So we have to pick it up for him. What was so extraordinary about Senator Kennedy is that he walked with presidents and prime ministers, kings and queens, rock stars, celebrity athletes. But the people he kept in his heart and in his mind, the people he got up to work for every single day were the public school teachers fighting to give every child a good education, the nurses working the late night shift, the new immigrants coming to our shores seeking the American dream, the young and old alike signing up for the Peace Corps and AmeriCorps, and most of all, the brave men and women in uniform. He was their champion. He knew they needed a voice in the halls of Washington, and he fought for those causes when they were popular and most often when they weren't. And that's why Senator Kennedy was not only a great man, he was a good man. For the past 18 years of his life, the last 18 years, he had an indispensable partner, Vicki Kennedy, his extraordinary wife. He writes so lovingly and movingly about their extraordinary relationship in his memoir, True Compass.
He said that Vicki was the woman who changed my life, the love of my life, and my soulmate. He tells about so many wonderful stories about Vicki's extraordinary grace and warmth and humanity that we all got to see, as Melody said, after his passing. And it is a gift to the nation, your leadership, Vicki, and how you shared him with all of us. And he also talked about, talks about her razor sharp wit. He shares that when they were first dating, and he was a little nervous about his re-election prospects coming up in 1994 in Massachusetts, his approval rating had plummeted to 48%. And without skipping a beat, Vicki responded comforting him, well, that's really good news because I don't date anybody whose approval's below 47. <laughs> and that's the kind of relationship they had. He talks about how she was with him every step of the way, through good and through bad, through wonderful times and through challenging times, and how she made him a better husband, a better father, a better son, a better public servant. When I read that, I could relate to that because my wife Vanessa has done the same for me. And I directly experienced Vicki's incredible love and the force of her personality during the Senate campaign last fall. I sent her an email, I think it was 1.30 in the morning, about something that was happening. She emailed me back the next morning and she said, Alan, that's great, but I'm worried about your schedule. Why are you emailing me so late at night? <laughs> and she said, you know, when I thought the staff was working Teddy too hard, I would just go in there and cancel events. <laughs> so I made the mistake of telling Vanessa this story. <laughs> the next thing I know, she's gone in and canceled a couple of events. <laughs> she emailed Vicky right away to say thank you. <laughs> and, email, and Vicky emailed back and said, way to go. <laughs> now, at first, I was really upset. You know, you're in a campaign and you're like, you just want to do it all. But when it came time for those events, like one was scheduled at 10 o'clock at night, and there was a debate the next day, I'm like, thank God. <laughs> Vanessa canceled those events, and thank God, Vicki, that you stepped in. So I experienced that directly. And I know that Senator Kennedy was also smitten with Vicki, and he writes about this when he met her, because she was an accomplished professional in her own right when they met. A single mom, a lawyer, a partner, working on issues, important issues of banking and regulation, state and federal law, having graduated summa cum laude from Tulane Law School, making it on her own. And Vicki, in, in her own right, has led a life of extraordinary public service. She's the founding president of Common Sense About Kids and Guns. She's been a trustee for the Brady Campaign. She's been on the Board of Stop Handgun Violence. She's been an advocate for issues affecting women and children and families her whole life, homelessness, education. He loved the Senate and making it accessible to school children and all of us to understand this great institution and how it really should work when you have a leader like Senator Kennedy in the, in, in the lead. She's been recently appointed to the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts by President Obama. Vicki's a devoted and loving mother and grandmother and caretaker for her beloved and Senator Kennedy's beloved Portuguese water dog, Sonny and Splash. She, and yes, and she has led her life by her values with extraordinary grace and dedication. Vicki, you are an extraordinary bright light for all of us who are blessed to know you and the nation that has fallen in love with you. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Vicki Kennedy.